something new tonight we are downstairs at o'neill's so if it's a little noisy this will be the last time we're down here <laughs> you see some drunk people wandering in it'll be the last time we're down here we got a new crew member tonight david murphy's coming dave where are you from are you on philly.com the daily news uh philly.com and the daily news all right you probably read me on philly.com because nobody reads newspapers anymore True. <laughs> but, uh, my grandma does yeah, you know, I actually ran into a guy in the barbershop the other day, and he told me he had an advertisement in the Daily News, and I had to tell him that I don't read it. So. <laughs> uh, Fireball Johnny's in the house, although he's a raspberry vodka Johnny. Stoli, yeah, Stoli Stoli raspberry. Raspberry. Raz. <laughs> nice. I missed you guys the last two weeks, too. Yeah, I was away well. for a couple hey, soccer tournaments. For some reason, his pants are off, too. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> yeah. I'll take care of you, man. I miss you, dude. <laughs> Do you want to share this shot with me? We got Angelina's <laughs> in the house. Jamie, Silent Bro, on Violations Greg. We're going to do a shot to get it started. Stoli Raz. Stoli Raz. <laughs> oh my God, it's delicious. Do you want to take? I left a little bit in the bottom for you if you'd like to. No, I'm good. Slurp the bottom. Thank you. So I know Jamie's fired up about this one. You getting so, right into the flake? Get right into uh, his boy. Those fucking cheaters. Dude, I'm so I want I'm kind Chip of Kelly heartbroken because I had such a man crush on Tom Brady. I always wanted to be Tom Brady if I could beat any athlete going. He's amazing. He's a fucking lying cheat, though. Yeah. The text messages are unbelievable. We actually had a conversation the other day. A buddy of mine, would you rather be Derek Jeter or Tom Brady? Oof. See, Derek Jeter's got the single bang 10 of Maxim's top 100 life. And then Tom's got the supermodel wife and the mansion, and she makes more money than him. Jeter's got that gig where he's got the gift baskets ready to go. Yeah, sign ball. Yeah. He calls him a limo, gives him a gift basket. I love yeah. Brady's Day Solid. Saturday. He goes to the Kentucky Derby, and then he goes right he to the He was shit-faced when Jim Gray was interviewing him at the fight. <laughs> he was looking sideways. It was great. That's a really tough one, though. Jeter or Brady? I can't play for the Yankees. No, but have you seen Jeter's latest? <laughs> no. Oh, he's uh, Hannah Davis now, right? Yeah. Her, she's on those direct TV commercials where she's riding the, the white horse. horse. She's ridiculous. Isn't she on the uh, the swimsuit cover? Yeah, yeah. That's, he, well, that's ah. a prerequisite for Jeter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the aspect of Brady, the wife makes like triple the amount of money. He, uh, she's one of the hottest women in the world and makes triple the amount of money. So that's a strong mm-hmm. push. But I'd probably go Jeter. King in New York. I think I'd go Jeter too. But Brady. Do they each have four rings? It's even. Does Jeter have four? Jeter's five. You guys five. Fifth against us. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not G- enough. If you're Jeter, you have to play 162 baseball games a year. Yeah, Brady, that's a long you know? season. And you get to hang out with Gronk if you're Brady. <laughs> yeah, true. He's a party. I'd probably rather hang out in Manhattan than Boston too. Well, yeah. 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 I'd rather win a Super Bowl than uh, a World Series. Yeah. So it's, I, he's, he's the, I mean, really. He's no, the, I think I'd go, I'd go yeah. Super Bowl over World Series. Yeah, I'd say, I'm Brady. I'd take Brady. Even though he's a cheat now? Yeah, it's fine. Dude, the thing is, he doesn't even need to cheat because the stats in the Super Bowl in the second half of that game were just off the hook. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I think they've done every conceivable cheat or tweak thing that you could possibly think of under the sun since... Like 2005, 2007, 2008, they get caught. They knew the league was looking at them. Anything they've done there on out, they know they're going to get dissected by Goodell and the and the league. And they continue to do it, and they continue to get away with it. Well, so that makes me just think they've done everything. You said 05, so you're giving them the, the three ones clean? Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot about the devastating Super Bowl loss. They were definitely cheating their ass off okay. then, too. Okay. <laughs> Is that Spygate? Yeah, that was, that was 04, right? I try to black that ear out of my memory. So what do they do with Brady? He's. What would you do? I think he should be suspended for a year. I would execute. That's him. ridiculous. I think. I, yeah? yeah, I think a year is too much. I wouldn't do anything. He he didn't actually deflate the balls, which. You know, He's putting pressure on those guys. Did you see the I, text messages? Yeah. The one guy hates him. 
I don't, uh, well, because he didn't get he didn't get at the free Uggs. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I had to read those text conversations like three times. I didn't think they were real at first. The one guy is so angry. He's just like, fuck Tom. Fuck Tom. Fuck yeah, that's Tom. all he says. He says it like three times. <laughs> fuck Tom. He's like, make sure you get those sneakers size 11. Yeah, he's like, maybe you'll have some Uggs waiting in your locker. I'm like, what the fuck is going on up there? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if, if, if Tom Brady is actually like Wayne Brady in uh, the Chappelle show and everyone just fucking hates him? And lost it? Like, he's just a legendary dick in the Patriots facility. The way these guys are talking about him, it doesn't seem like he's very well liked. No, you would think these guys would be his best buzz because yeah, he's hooking them greasing them. And if you're greasing somebody and they're still talking shit, man, you got to suck. I will say this: you can you you can read that text message conversation in kind of a humorous light, where they're just like, "Yeah, fuck Tom, ha ha ha," you know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I could, yeah. I could, I could t- it is tough to read that stuff out of context, but I would rather believe that Tom Brady's just a legendary dick. So. <laughs> so I've worked Gillette Stadium probably a good five or six times in the last three years, and I've noticed at the end of their stadium is a open throughway. That goes out to the Patriot place. Didn't you mention this before? I may have. Through, not through, not on the podcast. I think through text messages. Yeah, yeah, talked yeah. about this. So if you've seen Gillette, it has an open throughway at the one corner where they have that like pillar. It's like the symbol of the stadium. And then up through that throughway, the stairs leading up to Patriot Place. On the corner of Patriot Place is a giant like it's got to be like a fifty by fifty foot big screen. Right. Like, huge. So you can actually watch the games. They they broadcast the one and four o'clock games for a night game. So you can watch games from the parking lot. It's kind of cool. But I was standing on the Patriots sideline this year, and I look out the throughway, and what do I see? I don't know. Perfect view of the big screen TV where I believe they show replays before the coaches. They show the game replays before the coaches would have a chance to see the replay in the booth. How would they booth. show? How would they show them? They're not showing. It's like a live in-house feed. Oh, they're not it's showing not, the it's TV not, broadcast. I don't think when it's the Patriots game, they're showing the TV broadcast. I'm pretty wow. sure they're showing the in-house really? feed. And I believe that the Patriots could be looking at the replays to get an advantage in-house because the opposition can't see out. Did you ever see? What, did you ever look up what his record is as far as challenges at home? It's not very good, so it doesn't support my case <laughs> no, at <it> all. <laughs> but you know what does support my case? The no. fact that Patriot Place was built six years after Gillette. And I think Bill Belichick is crazy enough to <laughs> have them build that there. I think he's just any advantage possible type of guy. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So yeah. if he sees, if he's working that sideline, he looks out and he's like, "Hey, I respect that. We could put a big screen there." Yeah. And I don't put that past them. No, not at all. And I respect that. I mean, that's with. I want a little of that in Philly. Fair play. I want Chip Kelly to start doing this. Chip apparently he's he gets involved with everything. Somebody I know who works uh, the scoreboard at the link was telling me that at, during a preseason game, Chip, while the game was actually happening, was talking to him about what he does, how they fire off the replays, the whole process. So Chip does get involved with everything. I, you know, maybe he does too. Yeah, I I, I just think they've done anything you can think of Dude, under the sun. What wouldn't Chip be involved in? I mean, the guy's got to have his hand in everything. He's a control freak. Yeah. What do you think is over under on sleep as a night? Three and a half hours of fair line. Good amount of sleep because he's made. Like, he's he not sports sleep. science guy. He is. Man. No way, well, dude. He's, he's chugging beers. He's got a gut. When he's, he's up there on the, those press conferences, he's quick. He's witty. Yeah. He's, he's, he's very sharp. sharp. Like he, he seems. Well I just think he's a freak of nature. I just I don't think he's. <laughs> he's I don't think he sleeps much. He worked. I just think he works all around the clock. No, because I think when he first came here, they were talking about like having a cot there. I remember him saying, "If I can't figure it out in twelve hours in a day, then I'm not going to figure it out. I got to go home and sleep." Like, I don't think he's mm. a work all the time guy. All right, I just picture him. Although like... he lived two blocks from here, and I walk my dog out front of his house every day for the year last year. I've never seen him once. You said he yeah. lived here, like isn't he no longer does. He, he moved, he places moved for some... rent, so he moved somewhere else yeah. in town. Yeah. But I have I've never seen him once come in and out. Are you boys taking any Eagles road trips this year now that the schedule's out? I was actually looking to go to There's only like one England. good one, right? Boston. Yeah, yeah that's the only yeah. one worth going to. You don't want to go there. He's not playing. Foxborough sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the worst. <laughs> you're not going? It's just, it's a two-lane road in and a two-lane road out. Are you going for work or no? You're not going I used all? to go for work. I hate that stadium. It, take, it's, it takes you two and a half hours to get out of there. Really? No lie. It's weird. So you have to play. I mean, if you're tailgating and have like a, a limo bus or right. some kind of thing where you can tailgate and party, then it'd be cool. But if you're driving, 
It's miserable. We're looking into it now. A buddy of mine bought a couple tickets, and airfare's dirt cheap. So it's like yeah, airfare's bucks. real cheap yeah. in Providence. But get a um, get some kind of bus or something so you don't have to drive and plan on tailgating two hours after the game. Don't distract me now, man, because your boy Shady. I know you're. I mean, you and I, I love Shady. I, I know I you and Shady I have too. argued. Uh, you're a team Shady yeah. guy. I'm not. The dude's just gotta just shut up and move on at this point. I mean, what is the point of him bringing he's up a, he, Chip Kelly constantly? He's, he's just so scoring bitter. lover. Scoring. Like he just can't fathom. He's real butthurt right now. Yeah, he can't fathom that he didn't fit a system L- that's or someone didn't want him. He's kind of a sharp guy. So and he knows. Kind of the business side of things. So why is this a surprise? It's like when you, it's like when you get drunk and you text your ex girlfriend at night. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, you got to give me something else. I haven't had an ex girlfriend in like twenty years, uh, twenty five years. <laughs> Look, shady, sh- shady's in a, sh- shady's in a glass case of emotion right now, and he's not necessarily thinking rationally. And uh, and he's in Buffalo. I mean, and it's miserable. like, like you just don't you you don't act you don't act rationally when you get jilted. And, uh, I mean, if someone gives you an opportunity to vent about your ex, you're going to vent. No matter how hard you try to say something nice and rational, Yeah. you're just going to come across sounding like the crazy ex, which is why you don't text your ex-girlfriend late at night. And, That's uh, why you, you put that number on mute. Yeah, exactly. You're right. <laughs> don't they have apps for that to prevent? I think you have to do, like, a mathematical equation yeah, yeah, yeah. before you can actually <laughs> yeah. send a drunk text. You have to, like, figure out <laughs> pi or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, I think in Shady's mind, he... he 100% believes he's still the best running back in the league. He still does. Yeah. So Even though he ranked 10th ten, out of the top 10 yeah. in yards don't, per carry. Don't shit on Shady, man. He had, he had a great fuck run him. here. He fought that, that poor waiter over, over at PYT. Screw that guy. Right. The dude did good service. And uh, Shady had to teach him a I, lesson because he I had just, a bad day at work. I mean, I, I try to forget about that. He's a punk. But he was a great running back. Is he, he was. Is he trying to sabotage? Uh, he was a great running back, but he was not as great as his numbers. I agree. I don't think he was, and and I think that that I think Chip Kelly. Uh, I think he saw that on film. I think that he the took Eagles, too many losses for Chip I think, Kelly. I think the Eagles last year. If you look at if if you look at the games that they lost, particularly San Francisco, the Dallas game, um, and Seattle, uh, they they were held under 80 yards rushing in each one of those games. And I mean, the National Football League. Those are the teams you have to go through right now to win the NFC. And if you can't get those tough yards as a running back when you need them, um, you know, I, uh, yeah, I think that's the big misnomer about Kelly's offense. Uh, I mean, it's a running offense. Oh, it's 100% running you offense. Know? We're just working bar transactions here while yeah, talking yeah, we're Eagles. <laughs> why play the race card, though? Does, that's what uh, I was going like to say. Why, like does, why he there? Really, why that? does he really believe he that Chip Kelly's a racist, he but can't. only racist against good black players? Not I, I all think, black players. Well, him and Deshaun are probably the two most outspoken dudes in the locker room, I'd say. But are they outspoken, or are they just like me me players? I mean, you could be a vocal leader. No, be uh, vocal. I mean outspoken as in like loud, brash, well, I think they're, they're, me kind of guys. And not they're like me, me guys. They're not, I'm not saying me like, just like the center of attention kind of guys. Like yeah. I, I imagine them in the locker room goofing off a lot, you know, having fun, enjoying being an athlete. And I think Chip is so serious that he almost wants the, this is work, professional, like, here's your notebook, punch in, punch out, hit the weight room, no bullshit. And I, I think agree. To, and I think to, to him, those guys that are jerking around and having fun while they may be working hard, he doesn't want that. He wants, like, students of the game, which I, I love. Which he's, uh, he's admitted that. Which he, yeah. So that's why they took Algor- Algalor as, because uh, he's a student of the game. I've heard stories where, you know, Deshaun, like, got in Chip's face. Yeah. Right. And whether he's white or like black. Like, in practice, if you Deshaun's do that, calling him out. Right. And it's like, dude, you're, you, no, that's not what he, that's not the culture. Yeah, like, he's just not going to put up with that. He's not, yeah. Because to, to, to him, Deshaun can be replaced. Because his system is good enough to find somebody. And, and that's what Macklin I, looked pretty good in that system. And, and Shady also was due $11 million. $11 million. And there were a lot of second and twelve, second and thirteens this year. Yeah, and in mean, the big games this year, he came up small. Yeah, and he had, and he had losses for yards in a system that isn't made to get losses. And he wouldn't show up to the players' lounge after bad games. And he tips poorly. And he's calling him <laughs> a racist. So I respect him as being the the franchise leading rusher. 
But did you, did you see Todd Harriman's response to somebody on Twitter? No. So somebody tweeted Todd like, "Oh, Todd, as a black uh, as a black ex Philadelphia Eagle, how do you feel about Chip Kelly cutting you?" And he said, "Well, he cut me. He doesn't cut other people, or he cuts black people. He cuts you know non-black people. He cuts everyone. So I guess that makes him not a racist." I'll say I'll, I'll say this not to get it back on the track, but. Um, if you look at if you look at the great teams right now, Seattle, uh, I, I consider Pittsburgh because they're never bad. New Real e- quick, New Jimmy Graham on Seattle, my yeah. God! I, I, you know what? I think Jimmy Graham might be done because I don't think a team like the Saints does that unless they know something. And I'll tell you what, man, two years ago at least he did not look he did not look right. Um, and if you, you have foot problems and shoulder, it can, it can end in a hurry. And uh, yeah. but he, he looked all right last year. But but anyway. If you look at the Steelers, look how they dealt with their skill position players. Um, you know, look at... They let wide receivers walk every year. Exactly. Mike but, Wallace left. He's still I a mean, head case. Today he's saying he's the fastest guy in the NFL still. Yeah, I mean, look, look at look at Emmanuel Sanders, Mike Wallace, Paxo Burris. I mean, they just let those guys leave. Yeah. Rashard yeah. Mendenhall. I love the way the Steelers um, draft. Willie Park. I mean, they just they just keep filling them in. The, they, they find, I like Chip Kelly because... I think the Steelers are the best run organization besides the Patriots, the NFL, Agreed. and and they're the best drafting organization. And they every every player they draft fits their system. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the way you need to look at that's the way you need to look at football, and that's the way Chip Kelly looks. They got at another right steal this year in the draft. It was a linebacker. They always do. It was that dude from Kentucky. What the hell was oh, uh, name? Bud Dupree. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, they got him at like twenty. I know. Yeah. It's or like something? when they they drafted David DeCastro the one year, the guard. Yeah. And I was just like, dude, this like he's a Steelers player. He's they, gonna be awesome. They seem to know? get like one of the top five players, and they always draft like twenty two to twenty six. But I mean, look at so so look at the wide receivers that <laughs> Antonio Bryant is a stud. Antonio Brown. Antonio, Antonio Brown. Brown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and who's me. the guy? Martavis Bryant. Yeah, yeah, young guy from Clemson. But I, but I mean, look at the wide receivers that Seattle had in the Super Bowl last year. Look at the wide receivers, the, or look at the wide receivers the Patriots took to the Super Bowl. Sure. Um, I just don't know that. And, and believe me, I used to be a huge skill position guy, especially wide receivers. Like I, I thought Andy Reid's biggest shortcoming was the fact that he undervalued the position. But I mean, if you look at it, I mean, yeah. the teams that that are sustainable, that that that. They, they don't this, pay they the just keep, they, they keep, don't pay the skills, and they just keep turning them over. You know? And you look at the Patriots. To your point, Randy Moss was Brady's arguably he's yeah. the top five NFL receiver ever. So he was Brady's best weapon ever. Granted, they lost a miracle game to the Giants right. that year, but right. they never won with Randy. But Moss. look at the teams that have actually won Super Bowls for the Patriots, and you got like, yeah, Deion like Branch is Troy, your leading Troy, receiver. Yeah, Troy Brown and Deion yeah. Branch were your two leading receivers. And I mean, the one year they had Corey Dillon, but other than that, it was Kevin Falk and. I, I couldn't even tell you who they were. You know a nightmare I had year. as an Eagles fan? When they signed Greg Lewis, I, I went, watch. Greg Lewis is going to become, <laughs> like, all pro. He's going to become Super Bowl MVP, all because of well, Belichick. Just wait, just wait for the Kerry Williams experience next year. Oh, he's going to be a stud. Oh, shut was, down. Kerry wasn't that bad here. People just no, he wasn't. Bradley Fletcher. Bradley Fletcher was just yeah, that's, that's a different story. an abomination. To get back to the wide receivers, when they let the Sean go, I did a, an article. I traced back, like, I think the last 15, 16 years of Super Bowl champs, only three of those teams had an all-pro wide receiver. Let me, let me try to figure out which ones. What was it, 15 right. years? Yeah. All right, keep going. I'll, let me think about it. All right. Yeah, no, it, it's a great point. Champions? Yeah, Super Bowl champs. Right. Oh, wait. Angelina, you know that, right? I know all that. I'm surprised. Yeah, right. oh, right. that uh, uh, here's one. I was thinking Pey- about it. Peyton you know with all that. Uh, Reggie Wayne or Marvin Harrison. You know all that real yeah. man chick. Come on. Uh, so Heinz, Peyton was one. Ward may have been. Who? No. Ward? no. Jordy Nelson? No, right team. Oh, oh Jennings. Jennings. Greg, Greg Jennings. Jennings. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And there's one more. It may the Patriot maybe be on Branch or, or Troy Edwards maybe one. Troy Brown one year maybe. I bet you Pl- Plaxico could have been the one. Plaxico might have been up there. Yeah. I forget the third team. Yeah, no, it, it it's a great point. And Chip Chip knows more than we do. So I mean, he plugged Macklin in. I mean, Deshaun had his best year ever. I'm Macklin pumped for best Aguilar. Year ever. I bet a couple of USC games last year. <laughs> He's a presence. Well, I think that makes you qualified, then. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm an authority on the uh, matter. You know, I want to talk about that. Like, all these draft people. I know David had to write a piece about analyzing the draft. Yeah. Everyone wants to analyze the draft. You can't fucking analyze no, the I, draft. No, I love analyzing the analyzers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's where, that is where the fun is. When you when you, you go back and you read what people are writing about. Oh, yeah. It's, it's awesome. McShay and Kuiper get, like, eight round of eight right of, like, three rounds. But yeah. it's, it's just the proclamations that come out there, like Jaworski, and, and like they just forget about it. 
because Jaworski for for like two solid weeks before the draft was saying, you know, my sources are pretty plugged in, and they're saying, you know, Tampa's definitely drafted Marcus Mariota, and right. it didn't make sense because they're like, why would Tampa change their mind after three months of yeah. adding James Woodson? It's yeah. like, dude, these guys, all they've been doing for the last three months is trying to figure out who they should pick with another yeah. pick. They're not just going to change their mind two weeks before the draft. <laughs> yeah, right. But also, and, and, but like now they it's stumbled like, onto like, a new game reel. They're like, holy shit, we got to change our yeah. minds. Yeah. But like, does Jaworski just forget about that? That he was just there is wrong? no accountability. He also said that. Uh, Mariota will, according to Chip Kelly, win multiple Super Bowls. And why would Chip Kelly say that if he wasn't playing on draft? Right. Because that means he plans on losing the Super Chip Bowl. Chip said that before he was hired in the NFL. He said that three years ago. Oh, yeah. That's what that's what made me 100%. That was one of the things that made me 100% convinced. He did everything in his power to get Mariota. Because he, when he was getting interviewed for the NFL, he's on record as saying Marks Mariota will win several Lombardi trophies. You see, um, I uh, maybe it was a Philadelphia Examiner. I don't even know what the Philadelphia Examiner what is, that? is. Yeah, is that exist? But is that the Metro? Them, them and someone else had stories that um, there's rumors of Chip going to Tennessee now. Well, yeah, that's like <laughs> no. that's like the jo- I made the joke on air the really? other day. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, well, see, the, here's the thing with Chip. He's a real gamble. He's got no, he's yeah. got no kids here. He's here's got no I wife. I, I, he's got no real house. He oh, could be gone. Mayflower I, truck. At midnight. I don't think night. so, man. And I think I've been the piece I have. I want to come out this week with. We are so insecure as a football. Of course city, we are. We're psychopaths. And we have the hot girl right now. Like yeah. Chip is like the hot girl, and we're so worried he's going to leave yeah. us, or he's fucking looking at someone else. Of course. Or he's just going to fuck. We can't even understand the way he well, handles business now because we're used to dealing with just these other coaches who are okay with their coaches, but this is Chip Kelly. Well, like, this be, is where, in, who everyone wanted out of college. In January, he did try to get out of his contract because he didn't like the, the power struggle thing. Did he try and get out or just do a power move? I mean, he knew. Yeah, he, he flexed. He yeah. flexed. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking he of flexed. that, you know, I like the power move because this draft, there were no reaches. They didn't get cute. No, the draft was solid. They yeah. seemed like they drafted. I wanted Mariota. Yeah, me too. I wanted too. Chip to get his guys, so there's was, no excuses. Let's go. I was with you. I, thought I didn't want to lose Cox. 110% I thought we were getting them. I, I, I thought it was happening. And I'm, I don't believe the bullshit he's selling. I'm he a, didn't try. I'm oh. not a big Marcus Mariota fan. I like him. I, a, never, I never have been. I, I'm he, not a big fan of him, but I'm a fan of Chip seeing him, in him with Chip yes. in the yeah, NFL. That's the only reason I wanted him. I wanted Chip to get his guy, and I wanted to see if, if that's the way you're going to run your system and that's the perfect guy for your system, go get him. And that's it. We'll know. Here's here's what I don't understand. Maybe there's maybe there's an easy explanation for it. But if you really do covet this guy that much, why make the Lashawn McCoy trade before draft day? You think? Oh, why not hang on to him as it's like? What if what if what if Tennessee? Well, I think really wants Lashawn McCoy. I think they fear by draft day the word gets out that they're planning on not paying him the eleven million. Well, there's a leak. Tennessee's got Bishop Sankey, right? Yeah, I just feel like. In the NFL, it's so rumor crazy that well, I guess Shady what I'm saying is, like, th- would, would he have, would, would would Shady have drawn, like, would the Bills not have given up Kiko Alonso on draft day for LaShawn McCoy? I mean, why not, why not hang on to him as a chip, uh, you know, to facilitate a Mariota trade if you think that's a possibility? Yeah, I think you're right, but I just think that they were afraid of ch- of Shady doing something crazy to diminish his value. Okay, I think because that, if I, Shady leaks. Hey, they're getting they're shopping me, and, and every team knows you're not going to get shit for them. Right, and I think they wanted that 11 million free so they could use it the following week in free agency. Was right, that was couldn't they the still use Thursday? it and then trade? Couldn't they still use it and then trade trade them away later? They could have well, gone over the. Then people know you have to trade. Well, they were right against the cap too. Right. So, yeah, and I also think they were burned by. I think Chip was burned by the Deshaun Jackson. Where they held him oh, yeah. and they couldn't get anything for him after everyone drafted that and signed sense. people. And the NFL is crazy as far as their contracts and free agency. Dude, how is it not guaranteed? It's, it's like, unlike it's, any <laughs> other league, man. It's the nuts. players have no leverage. Like Gene Upshaw has got to be the worst union leader in the None. history of America. It's 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 absolutely insane. I mean, you never get a fair trade in the NFL. Trades trades are rare. You can get cut at any given moment, and teams have all the power. Look at that compared to baseball, right? Three hundred million. Giancarlo Stanton's got guaranteed. Right? <laughs> what a disaster! He breaks his ankle playing touch football and can't play anymore. Goddamn, A Rod setting the bar at two hundred million yeah. for the Rangers back in the day. What a dick! Ruined baseball. Philadelphia, yo, yo, where you at? 
I heard um, Jaws saying that um, the Eagles, he doesn't think they're better right now than last no. year. But Vegas would tell you otherwise. So I don't understand how, because I'm going to say this blew that my Bradford mind. and Foles are almost a wash. No, I, mean, I think Foles if, wasn't even healthy last year. If and he's Sam been hurt Bradford, for the last two years. We might as well change his name officially to If Sam Bradford. But if Sam Bradford is healthy, I think he is slightly better than Foles. Oh, I think he's far better than Foles. Yeah, if not far better. Yeah. It's the injury that's So we terrifying. still have Sanchez. They've upgraded corners. They probably have upgraded safety. Oh, I think Eric Rowe's a player. Yeah. I, yeah. again, bet a couple of Utah games because they were back 12 and late, so that makes me an authority on the matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> but even when I didn't know Eric Rowe, he stood out, like, watching the game. So I, 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 when I say this, I watch probably four to five Utah games. <laughs> yeah. So I'm making this, this, this statement off. Which of is more than most of the people that are experts. Yeah, yeah, yeah the so I'm an authority. I'm the yeah. Utah authority in Philadelphia. Sure. And he stood out. Great. He's a player. Running backs are better. He's I think versatile. linebackers are better with Kiko Alonso. Dude, our linebackers core might be the best in the league. I think the offensive line is better because Todd Harriman's isn't on it. So you thought he was a detriment last year? I think he, I thought he was a big detriment. He got I thought he's hurt. been I thought he's been a big detriment for the last two or three years. To be honest with you. Yeah, I just like his versatility and toughness. You like him too. And I like him as a guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He was a good Philadelphian. He was cool. He was in the city. Who's so gonna, that definitely jaded me. Who's going to catch the football, Riley the Liber- Cooper? The, hey, the Liberty Bell's a good football. No, Ra- Riley Cooper. <laughs> he made <laughs> well, well, How though. the fuck is Riley Ra- Cooper still in this dude, team? He, Who's going to catch the football? Hit? Dude, he must be the best blocker ever. <laughs> yeah. Sick <laughs> blocking <laughs> downfield. So, so no, right. I think, yeah, I think gonna, Matthews I, 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 and Aguilar is going to be... only worry is who's going to catch so the football downfield. I like it. I think the offensive line could turn into an under-the-radar problem for this team. I want Lael Collins. I go sign him right now before anybody else does. Oh, well... I Logan's recruiting him. Yeah, my gut tells me he's innocent. Yeah. That's just my gut. That's all I'm going well, on. Even if he isn't, you're going to lose him. The most you can guarantee him is a million and a half. And the, and, and worst case, it's a so bad PR move. a million move. and a half. You signed a potential well, a baby PR move if you cut him. As it's soon bad as you find that out. she was pregnant, so that that is like really bad PR. The baby lived though, right? No, no, no I don't it, think so. It made it one day. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really oh. bad. So it's a bad, bad PR hit. Right. But if you were able to sign a top ten talent tackle. As an undrafted free agent, that's like the steal of the century in the NFL. Yeah, but every team is going to be. It's well, that's the thing. Dolphin, Dolphin sent Jarvis Landry, Pouncey, and a couple other bros to go recruit him. Because all you can Rex do is... went down and had lunch or dinner with him. Yeah. And uh, Benny Logan had the tweet that they mentioned. Another round of shots. Sure. Yeah, sure. I got to hey, go back Phil. to dinner with the wife, so why not? You get another round of shots. <laughs> Dave alluded to it that. Uh, that's why I'm not married. <laughs> She was like, you're going to be done by 7.45, right? I'm coming back from the gym. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I got 45 minutes, Greg. All right. Oh, I just got yeah, I just I, got the update, 7.40. It, nice. It's weird because J- Jason Peters has this thing where one year he's the best offensive lineman ever in Eagles history. What is he, 32? He's like 32, 33. He's got, I, don't, I looked at the other day. He's got two or three. You, you can only count on two or three. What's his contract? What's he got left? It's like three he years. He's got a new one last year. He's essentially, the, the, they're essentially committed to him for the next two years. Okay. Um, That's fine, though. But he's got this thing even beyond the contract and the age. He's, he, he, like, he was awful. His, I don't want to say awful, but he was pretty bad his first year here as an Eagle. And then he was great the next year. Yeah. And then he's just had, and he gets hurt. And well, Lane is he's, the he's got eventual some, Peters replacement. Right. But I'm just saying, in terms of units that could potentially hey, turn into a huge Achilles heel, I think that the offensive line is an underrated one. You think the problems you just, on you the offensive just said pale ale. You just said pale ale. You think Mike. the problems on the offensive line are an underrated one? I think I think the potential, potential. for I think the potential well, for season undermining disaster is a little. Chip has drafted real quick one offensive lineman in three three drafts now. I get it. One, but, but the Patriots also and the Seahawks pull a lot of the people out of the undrafted pools. They They're not drafting a lot. No, of No, I get linemen. that, but that's it's it's more risky, isn't it? Jason Peters last year ranked as the number one tackle according to Pro Football. Yeah, Focus. he was great last year. Yeah, but then he's—if you look at his career, he's just. So you think he's due yeah. for a down year? I'm not saying he's due for a down year. No, but I'm just looking at potential. Trends. I'm just—I'm just looking at what could go wrong with this team, and I think that. It oh, if not, he goes it, down, it we're done. It wouldn't shock me if you're talking about the offensive line as 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 and Achilles heel. Yeah, I think we got spoiled a couple of years ago. Uh, I mean, Kelsey is legit. Yeah, I mean, but it, but it's also Lane is. Pretty it's, solid. It's solid. Right guard is a real question. I, mark. I really don't. I don't think you can. I think Harriman's was just a replacement level guy the past couple of years. So Gar- I don't know that Gardner maybe a chip or a. Or he, he, Ma- he likes these Tobin. Tobin and again, I think I, I honestly think Mathis is pretty overrated too. Um, 
I mean, he's he had a really good year a couple of years ago. Um, but I, I don't think he's as good as he thinks he is. I think guard is almost the equivalent of, like, second base in right. baseball. There's just not a lot of good guards. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you kind of... I mean, again, you're talking about a guy who resurrected his career at 30 yeah. years old. I mean, right. you know, maybe it was the system. I can't, I can't wait to watch the, the Rams next year. I, I, I am going to watch them. I am... I they am, have a great defense. I'm the charter member of the, the Nick Foles hater club. and uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, we were talking about the bar. Oh, I, I like Nick with, Foles. With you I think he's going to be I, I think he's gonna be disastrously fun to watch next year. <laughs> and I think the Rams are going to be disastrously fun to watch. And I really would not be surprised if Nick Foles is so bad in the preseason that he's not the starting quarterback on that Rams team. Wow. Who, that, wow. Has, that has no other quarterbacks. <laughs> wow. I, watch, I probably watched and gambled on the Rams more last year than any other team in the league. So Why is that? I'm... I, just because the Lions, Jeff that's the way the Lions dogs, turned out. I was, went, I was betting against the Niners all year last year. Yeah, and yeah. and I think Jeff Fisher's overrated and whatever. Oh yeah, but he, he uh, went. Jeff Fisher's like, never I, like. What's his playoff record? He's like. Oh, yeah, he's like the Marty Schottenheimer. But I just said no. Yeah, all right, all right. Bad. As an underdog, he wins two or three every three, two or three games. Well, yeah, but you know he covers two or three games. Yeah. I don't know if he wins. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I was betting on him. But speaking of Schottenheimer, do you know who his? Offensive coordinators. I shouldn't even say Jeff Fisher. He's, no. he, he puts a great defense. Uh, it's his son. Brian Schott. 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 And it looks exactly like. <laughs> That's if you had to guess what family, what house was running this Rams offense, you would right. be like, this is a house of Schottenheimer offense. Well, that was a, <laughs> the offense. Uh, San, uh, Winners yeah, coming. Sanchez running in yeah. New York. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah, exactly. It, it's the same it's, offense. Not to, not to digress here, but yeah. you look at this. I mean, Kyle, Kyle Shanahan's interviewing for jobs, and, and Brian Schottenheimer is running an offense in the NFL. Yeah, nepotism runs deep There's a in kid. all like, aspects. Shula of ran the Bengals, right? Especially the yeah. NFL. You, yeah, exactly. dude, Andy <laughs> Reid's kids are in the league. His one son's in the league. As He's like, like a, a strength like yeah, exactly. coach. Well, he only has one. Well, son. Has one son. Well, we have to keep in mind, that, like this. <laughs> and is they a, also there was a steroid bust at training camp one year that nobody in this town seems to talk about. But yeah, right. We'll, we'll right. skip over that. But I mean, this is why you have to you have to con- at least consider the, the fact that Chip Kelly is just a normal of normal intelligence, and everybody else around him is stupid. Because there's some stupid people in the NFL, and yeah, you know, I think Kel- I, th- I think Chip Kelly's very smart, but I don't think he's any smarter than no. And he would be know? the first to tell you that. Right. I, I just think that there's some really really stupid people oh, running, really running offenses in the NFL. Really? Oh dumb. yeah. And I think that Chip, which is why LeSean McCoy is not going to be good next year either, because that's yeah, he, that's number Rex, two. On the Rex list. is a disaster for him. Who, who's the coordinator up there? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Who's yeah. a whoever, who's whoever, a quarterback whoever it is, Buffalo hires EJ, a lot of person. It's an EJ Manuel and um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Somebody else battle. It's somebody else. Oh, well, Matt Castle. Oh God, exactly. really? Yeah, yeah, Shady's probably gonna suck. Shady will have no yard. I mean, he's gonna suck because just gonna have eight man in the box oh. against him. Well, he'll have fifty carries for one hundred twenty five yards. Where did CJ Spiller sign? New Orleans? I don't know. I think he's going to be good. I think he, CJ Spiller, if he stays healthy. I think healthy, he was a victim of the there's Buffalo. There's a lot of if. He was a, buff, he was a victim of the Buffalo. I think he's suck. a saint. That would be a good sign for them. That's actually a good. That's a great. That would make a lot of sense. Let's see how quick iPhone we is. Have a, we have a duel now to see um, yeah, he's who's signing. Oh, of I course, still, Mike Angelino. I still can't believe Matt Barkley's going to be in the NFL again next year. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty how amazing. How has this team not drafted a quarterback the last couple of years? Dude, we got Tim Tebow. We have two Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks on yeah, this team. Did. Did Ch- was I mean, Chip Kelly on. made for newspapers and sports talk <laughs> radio or what? This guy's hilarious. It's either that or he's so the oblivious great, to it. The great thing, I, honestly, I think part of me thinks he's oblivious to it and part of me thinks he just is I like, think he trolls. He, he gets bored troll? and he's like, yeah, you want to fuck with the media today? <laughs> yeah. Let's get Tebow out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because seriously. Dude, when I, we brought him in for a practice, I was like, he's 100% trolling us. I, I legitimately. We even said that on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I, I really think he looks at Tim Tebow like G.J. Kenny, where he's just like, we got to have someone to take snaps yeah. in minicamp. Well, so good like, scout team guy. Let's bring exactly. Tebow in there and let the media freak like, out about Tebow's it. Tebow's a scout team wonder. Like he can do. Like, but here's the thing. He's a great scout I team guy. I think he makes yeah. the team. I think he's going to make the team, too. I think he's your third Barkley quarterback. Barkley is not going to make Barkley this team. Barkley sucks. Get rid of him. Barkley Who cares? They, it is so weird because so a year earlier, if, I bet, I bet if Barkley was chip, like, hey, dude, I'll bet, I'll bet a, whatever podcast follows the final roster announcement, I'll pay for all the drinks if Tim Tebow makes his football team. <laughs> wow. There's absolutely no way. That's all right. Mark, you know Tim Tebow? Mark in that wow. Hold on, hold on. We got to do that late night. Make, make, sure that makes, so make sure that makes the yeah, cut. so we don't get happy hour prices. Make <laughs> sure that's late night. <laughs> yeah, I'll take off that day, too. Dude, I'm, I'm, Does that include food here? Because <laughs> the food's delicious. Whatever. The chili. It's reasonably the chili, priced. The chili's so good. Here's the only reason I think he makes the team. 
okay, he's a third string quarterback, but I can use him situationally. Sure. And we struggled in the red zone. Absolutely. So Chip sees him. If he uses them once or twice a game as a red zone inside the five yard line threat, yep. To Chip Kelly, that's his weight in gold. That what? doesn't work. He, why did he, why he had he, Brad Smith for a full year and didn't use him. Why didn't he think that Press last? Why didn't he think that last year? The, the Tebow sucks. The Brad Smith play the, Wait, in Dallas Brad two years Smith ago worked. Does suck. So, and Tebow's got Tebow's got a new throwing motion no, but mechanics. But uh, okay. the QB coach. Well, but why 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 wouldn't Chip Kelly look at him like that last year? Because he didn't have the new technique. Yeah, new mechanics, with the coach. man. I'll, I'll show you an exact. <laughs> Who would you rather be, Jeter or Tebow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, there's no way he's a virgin. Are you kidding me? If, if he is, he's the dumbest man alive. At Gainesville, the starting quarterback, two-time national champion, the Heisman winner. You you are a stronger willed person than Jesus Christ himself if you get out of well, there. How virgin. about the people he was regularly around? Aaron Hernandez, the Pouncies. Yeah, and he was uh, and he was roommates with Riley Cooper. Yeah, Riley Cooper. So he's probably half a race. I mean, shoot, Tebow might have killed a guy. All right, there's not much to talk about with the Phillies. But since we have Dave Murphy here with us, you prefer Dave over David? I don't care. All right. Mr. Murphy's here with us. I called you Dave earlier on the street. Yeah, I called him Dave, I, too. I, I mean, his I, byline says David, so I don't know what to call it's him. It's just always what I've... It's just all. It was the first time. The uh, first time I ever wrote my name as a byline, it was David, so it was just kind of David from there. But my mom's, I think, my mom's really the only one. I think one to proceed... I don't know if we can go much further without you following me on Twitter. I think we're going to have to change it. Oh, that. yeah. I mean, I... Yeah, I think we have to change that. You know what? You know, I feel a little let's, uncomfortable. Let's do it I follow right now. him. You know he what? I have to call me. out, dude. Let's I gotta right call now. out Gonzo. I follow Gonzo. Wait, Wait, you know Gonzo? I've bought drinks and done shots with Gonzo, and he doesn't fucking follow me. Oh man! Yeah. Hey Gonzo, you're on blast, bro. Yeah, you're on blast. Yeah, I think Colleen follows me, but Gonzo doesn't. Oh man, Gonzo's a real cut. Gonzo's a tough follow to get, yeah. man. <laughs> what's your What's your What's your J. name? J. E. Lynch Jr. J. E. Lynch. Yeah, Gonzo, uh, we're neighbors, so he uh, he followed me within the last year. He was a big right. guy. Me and Gonzo were cool. Was it after, like, a conversation outside your the two homes? Yeah, we talked a lot. It's getting a little louder in here. Like he went upstairs, like, I gotta go follow this guy. Yeah, I was like, yo, Dick, you don't follow me. Yeah, that's a great happy hour crowd here. Oh, yeah? It's at O'Neill's. Yeah. It's packed. O'Neill's Third Street between Baymers and so, South. Is somebody Fantastic playing Genesis, anymore, Phil though. Collins? Because there's a major Phil Collins theme going on here tonight. This is the police. This is the police, yeah. Oh, oh. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Sting, yeah, this not is Phil Collins. I had Genesis and Yo, Phil Angelina Collins. Angelina is as good as he is with sports trivia. He's good with classic rock as well. Thanks. Is that your wheelhouse? Really, any music. Once I hear it, it just sticks. Yeah, he's got, like, the Rain Man brain. Yeah. So, All right, ready? You guys want to do a little game? Yeah, yeah I'm going yeah. right. to drop a bunch of toothpicks right. Here, and here's Rain how, Man will count. Here's how, freak, here's how freaky Angelina was that, is. Was that the extent of our Phillies talk, by the way? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> it's about, our, that's about yes. right. All right. Yes, so, next. Angelina's Rain Man when it comes to Philly scores. So, are you good on last year's scores? If I put you on the spot here? Yeah, how good I are mean, you? Last year, there was a lot of liquor involved. But yeah. Okay. What do you want me to go back to, 08? Uh... Oh seven. Oh seven. Yeah. Can I name a specific date in 07? Yeah, say it. Let me think. Of, I won't pull my phone. Or All right, let me, give me like. Let 10 me minutes. give you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. What's going on? Let's here? say 2007 <laughs> Phillies. There was a late Brave series, wasn't there? Uh, At home. Yeah. Like almost last for the division the or something. Last yeah, week it might have been the last. He, week he must season. never drink Wait, when he's not this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude's wrong. I think we won the NL East in 07 for the first time. Yeah, Howard Homer, all three of those games. Okay. You can tell me at the second shot, i got to pull down much right, levels so and start to overmodulate a little bit. He gets loud <laughs> as he drinks. All right, so he already nailed that Howard hit three home runs during the <laughs> the home stand against the Braves late in September in 07. Remember how Utley fucked with uh, Chipper Jones? Was <laughs> no. Right. No, I don't. I'm going to pull up a score on my phone. Give what me happened? a minute. You what happened? He'll tell name me. you the, the score All right, let's if do you this. give him a date. In 2007 with Phillies. I'm going to put you on the line. Well, I think that series was September uh, 24th through 26th. No, 25th through 27th. That sounds right. I think I was. I, all right, so I had a credential. I shouldn't say this on air, but I was at the game in the stands. Okay. And I was a little, you know. Yeah. And I took off all my Phillies gear, had my credential in my pocket, and I ran into the locker room and I celebrated the NL East Championship that year. As a as a straight up fan, that well, they didn't win it against the Braves though. No, but I was at the whatever the clinching game was. That Sunday game. Yeah, 
Okay. I, was I that celebrate. Game stands. Okay. But I'm gonna find this Philly score, and I want you to from leave. that game. From the, ooh, the clinchy game was yeah, that Marlins? It was six to one against the Nats. And uh, Jamie Moore won against. Um, it'll take me like a few minutes to think of the Nationals guy because he wasn't much, but. Yeah. John Lana. Oh, Willie Mopena struck out four times that game. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Mopena struck out four times that game. <laughs> We got a local sex educator. She's a Philly.com contributor. Maybe maybe Dave knows her, Dr. Timory Schmidt. I should check her out. Yeah, man. I Holiday party, experience. hook her, uh, hook up with her. So I she's think John's telling you watching her work. The there. right and wrong way to pick up people at the gym. It's Wait, like, who picks up people at the gym? I know there's a lot of like hot ass there. This is these what not to do. It's, it's glad she wrote these out because I mean we'd all be single guys be like just. Jim is stair city. Don't though. interrupt someone in the middle of a workout. Yeah, that's, who that pisses people that? off. Like, who's going to do that? It's, excuse me. Don't make your excuse opening me, your statement sexy. about their looks. Obviously, they're sweating and, like, bashful. Yeah, like, what are you going to say? A hey, nice ass. Hey, I, I I was, I've been your staring at your butt and that yoga yeah, pants for the last 20 years. Do they all wear yoga pants down here? Pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. You're pretty much you guys belong to gyms down here? Who belongs to a gym? Yeah, I do. I got to show you sports club. Everybody belongs to a center city gym down here. Yeah, I don't. Really? <laughs> you don't need to, dude. Look at you. You're a beast. Yeah, right. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> Avoid being an obnoxious show-off. Of authentic grunts are fine, but but hyperbol- hyperbolic? So, it's hyperbolic? Yeah. <laughs> Ones make an awful mating call. So don't be the Monica Sellis so, at your so, gym, basically. So this is what you should do now. We're getting what you should do. Build a rapport from afar first. What does that mean? Yeah, say that hi mean? when you end up together Build by the water cooler. From afar. What does say that mean? Say hi the water cooler. Then Cre- go back to your bench press. But that's not from afar. That's Wait, in person. Like, does that's that mean like creep, creep in not a creepy way? Just like from the corner, just wave. Yeah, like Make icon small thing? talk about a thing on the TV. Or ask about their experience with a group of exor- with a group exercise class. Oh, God. That's talk. terrible. Talk to other people. They want to see that you're friendly in the community and other people at the gym like you. There is a gym community. This is my favorite. Which is a whole is, world I'm not... Dude, this is the best advice ever. Be attractive and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we all fail. Yeah. Having, having clean workout clothes that fit well go a long way. Make conversation that's fun and inviting. Pay attention to the way they respond. At the gym, you've seen someone at their most disgusting a malodorous. No, I'm pretty sure most well, you've also seen them showcasing their yeah. bodies and work ethic. It's a fairly helpful barometer to find out about a person. If a cutie strikes your fancy, be brave and make a move. But be smart and make it count. Words of Wisdom by Dr. Timory. On the- my my words of name? wisdom. Is it doctor? Yeah, something. Yeah, doctor of what? Stroking it? <laughs> my advice is, as somebody that hasn't dated in a long time, don't try and pick up really anyone, anyone at the, the gym, gym. Unless they're 100% done their workout and like... Drinking water in the lobby. Well, the or women something. are just on guard. It's the most annoying yeah, thing to like, a woman that's the to get thing. picked like, up. If you're at the a gym. chick, you know dudes are staring at your butt. Right. You know you're getting checked out. Like right. they just want to get in and get out. Don't yeah. don't hit on anyone in the gym. Them. If you want to wait till they go out to the street corner and accidentally bump into them and say hey. Yes. PHS announced their three beer gardens this year. Yeah, I'm pumped. One of them's uh, East Passion. Yeah. I guess there's a there's a lot near Jim's or Gino's and Pat's. Yeah, it's gonna be right near there. Oh, and, I like uh, that. It's gonna be catered by Cantina and Royal Tavern crew. Nice. Yeah, they do good stuff. Both solid spots. There's a Logan Square one, 18th and Cherry Street. I will never be there. Me neither. City Tap House is gonna provide the beer for that. Eh. One of my favorite bars in the city is the Cherry Street Tavern on 20th and Cherry. Yeah. Why so? Just I've think never it's been. So old school, so throwback. They got a guy cutting roast beef at the bar. Like just, just like the old dumpy dive, like no, Wait, no douchebag crews are there. Is that his only job? Is there just a roast? Yeah, beef there's a roast beef guy. That's it, that's he's got the he bloody, does. he's got the bloody apron. Sure, it's great. Wait, is it raw that's roast beef? No, yeah. it's like it's cooked, but it's really like well done on the outside. It's yeah, I've been. You, you know, know what I'm talking well, about, I'm right? Not that place, but I've been to but many like, roast beef places. He probably, talk, he talk he probably just job. wipes his hand on the. Sorry, the mic's not really working. All right, there's some other It's a little noisy back here. No, it's a gr- it's a great Greg, spot. But you, Greg, but you don't eat roast beef, do you? No, not any, not any Do you miss it? No. Do you miss an end cut of roast beef? I miss my grandma's roast beef. With a little, little, little au jus. 
Uh, I love the dude, old I can chug all There's shoe. nothing like a good Ooh, vegan old shoe. Oh, please. Oh, what? Come on. And uh, over, over French fries? South Street West. From what, like what, 16th? Uh, 1438, right next to the Jamaican Jerk Hut. Oh, nice. But here's my problem with this one. Lafayette Hills Barron Hill Brewery is doing the beer for this one. I've heard about them. I've yeah, never but they're in Lafayette there. Hill. We can't have Philly Brewing Company or Yards. Well, that's a little weird that there's not a Philly Or Dock brewery. Street. Yeah. So. You know what You know what rumor I heard? No. The Nodding Head is coming to Pennsport. Oh, yeah? Where at? Front Street. Front what? The urban, the old Ugly American? No. That's a new spot that's opening called uh, Keystone Bar. Okay. That's going to be a Pennsylvania historically themed bar, only seven Pennsylvania beers. Are they going to wear costumes like the I hope city not. tavern, like Colonial Tavern? <laughs> that would be cool. But yeah, I hope uh, Notting Head comes to Pennsylvania. So where? Do you know where? Or they're just... I've heard, I don't know this at all, but Front Street in one of those old warehouses. That's a rumor I've heard. And we got Philly Bike Rental is in town, Indigo. Oh, hell yeah. So uh, I know Jamie is a um, advocate. He's a client. How's it going so far? I love it. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, the fact that you can pick up a bike anywhere and drop it off somewhere else is phenomenal. I have to say, as a bike rider, I judge. I only know this because yesterday I know I, look I like was a total driving corn down the, on the um, bike lane on Spruce Street heading abroad. And there was a um, a rental bike there, and the guy just looked so awkward. Looked like it was the first time on his bike you in forever. Can't he look kept cool. looking behind him like he was worried bikers and cars were coming off. Yeah, you have zero percent. And I was like, look at this cool guy. This is just a an but they amateur have a basket. Ma- it's like it's a quality bike, and you can drive it off wherever you want. So like, I walk a lot in the city. So yeah. like, if I don't feel like walking, it's a great option. You ride it helmetless. Yeah. I throw the headphones in, ride a helmet, listen. What do you mean what happens if you get hit by a car? Bartender Bill's asking if we get hit by a car. I, I, had, I, didn't, I didn't read my user agreement. You thoroughly. had to sign a waiver, I'm sure. Yeah, there's some kind of waiver, but they, like, I don't know. You're just not going to have it happen. So. Yeah, I'm just not going to get hit. You're a That's fan of it? You like it? I love it. It's great. I love the fact that you could drunk ride in the city i mean i don't understand how they made those bikes indestructible like you can't steal a tire you can't steal the seat dude they're really like thick uh they're trek bikes like yeah. good quality and uh you know like good good the um, gear system. it's a three gear bike it's solid it's got baskets for your shit and you can drop them off wherever you want all right. I'm all for it. All right. And you've got no chance of cheating on your wife while you're on one. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> There's no chance of looking cool on one of those things. Right. So I want I want to play something. Uh, Jamie is a, um, a Fitbit. Is that what they're called? The Fitbit? Yeah. The the thing you wear on your wrist. Clearly, that, uh, I'm very fit. Measures your um, how, what you walk, your heartbeat. I like it for the sleep. Your sleep. It tracks your sleep. Chip, it's basically Chip, Chip Kelly stuff. All right. So I've teased this in a podcast before, but I want to play this for you guys to listen to and then tell me what you think about this. It's like a minute and a half video. We just got new beers and Angelina got stiffed on one. Yeah. I think it'll be all right. All right. So take a listen to this and then we'll talk about this afterwards. Have you ever thought about how many hours a day you spend online and how much energy you consume in the process? It's well known how incredibly fast we run out of our natural resources and what's worse, how much they pollute in order to create energy. All the time you spend connected, you are adding to their use. At Pornhub, we realize that by offering our users (laughs) millions of hours of adult content, we are part of the problem. That's why we're going to show men how they can save the planet while doing what they do best. You burn calories jerking off. Pornhub presents the Wank Band. The first gadget for the wearable tech era that allows men to love the planet by loving themselves. A device that generates power by motion and adapts naturally to your routine. Solar Working energy? during your most relaxed and self-gratifying like moment of the day energy. and generating electricity from a natural source. Manpower. Here's how it works. The band contains a valve with a small weight inside that generates and stores energy when moved in an up and down motion. And we all know what exercise does that move. 
right? Now, just plug any device you need to charge into the USB port on the band. Smartphone, laptop, camera, tablet, and voila! You are creating dirty energy. Organize eco-orgies. Turn your jobless roommate into a productive person. And now, when your partner catches you in the act, you can simply say that you're just trying to save on the electric bill. The possibilities are endless. Sign up as a beta tester, and a soon you'll be tester. able to take advantage of the special rewards program we have in store for our wanking warriors. And of course, the wank band is 100% unisex, and it works just as well for women. Yeah, but they're not putting in the same Ladies work and as gentlemen, us. now the power is in your hand. Pornhub, stop jacking off and start jacking on. That would be phenomenal if that, if that was real. It's not real. I mean, there's no way whacking off is going to create kinetic energy to actually use. Because <laughs> yeah. if so, this world wouldn't need electricity. That's a very simple. Everybody's point whacking of view. off at least once or twice a day, right? I mean, for the most part. It's a genius promotion, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I was straight up worried about that because I have a Fitbit. Yeah. And I was like, shit, like, if, if I whack it, like, you know, so the way the Fitbit works is you have a thing in your laptop, and if you get within 20 or 30 feet of it, it automatically detects it. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, say the wife opens up my computer and my Fitbit thing's open, and she knows I didn't go to the gym that day. But then she sees like a, uh, you know, 15 to 20 minute rate. elevated heart rate workout at like, you know, a time she wasn't home. It's like, hey, uh, what, were you, what were you doing there? It's like, I don't know, running the stairs. Dude, I thought about that. Uh, when I had the car wreck, I was in the hospital for nine days. And like by day like five or six, I'm feeling good. And I was on heart monitors. I was afraid to even like think certain thoughts, let alone do anything, because I thought the heart rate would it. <laughs> Accelerate to a point where people will come rushing in. You got a boner. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. All the nurses. We need everybody on the floor. Right. Yo, Comic-Con's <laughs> this weekend. You guys geeked up or what? There's probably a lot of dudes geeked Burt up. Burt Reynolds is coming to town. Is Burt Reynolds coming? Yeah. Iverson's supposed to be there. Is he? Iverson? I'm looking. There's question and answers. We're, we're giving it out at work all week. And Wait, <laughs> because of a... Why is he at Comic-Con? Because of his movie? Is it just promoting? I, I, Maybe he needs money. He needs money. I would, well, why I would, would venture to say that's probably Why accurate. would the sci-fi Comic-Con people be into seeing Ivan, Alan Iverson? Different crowd, man. Maybe he made it in, like, an anime or something. Like they bring oh, you're right. Look, his picture, Bartender <laughs> Bill points out that his picture is on the banner. Oh, my God. On the Comic-Con website. AI, what did, what did you do with yourself, <laughs> With the headband man? on. <laughs> that's with so the sad. Yeah. That's, guy. that's so sad. So there's question and answers with um, Burt Reynolds, Ed Lee Shyamalan, Frankie Munez. Frankie Munez. Wow. Danny Trejo, who's Dust Till Dawn, I like that. I don't know these other people. Katie Cassidy from Gossip Girl? Penn yeah. Badgley from Gossip Girl? No idea. Why is Gossip Girl at Comic-Con? Just because they're hot? That's got to be it. Carrie Ilways, Princess Bride, Robin Hood Men in Tights. So I don't know. That's going on this weekend. It might be worth going and taking some pictures and hanging out. There's probably those dudes that are into, like, uh, like costume fetishes. Oh, I saw one They're of those, have a field like, there. a cosplay. I yeah, saw yeah. that at the... Isn't um, there a whole thing of that? The uh, Cherry Blossom Festival in Fairmount Park. Oh, it's you're all, all into those Japanese weirdos. theme. They do it a whole cosplay fashion show, which is kind of crazy. I'm sure there's costume fetish dudes out there. There's a bunch of creepy dudes taking yeah. pictures of that fashion show. And the, the women doing it, well, they're probably not even women. They're probably girls. They're like 16, 17, dressed up like these female action fighters or superheroes. Video game and yeah, like yeah. superhero shit. Yeah. Oh, wait. That's what I also read that. Speaking of video games, hold on, man. Let me look here. There's a cover band. I don't know what their name is, but when I was reading through this stuff, there's a cover band at a Comic-Con that plays video game music and songs. Wow. Hold on, man. Hold on. You got bad info over there? There's a, there's the sports theme panels. You got bad show prep? With Allen Iverson. Wow. And a current Philadelphia Eagle. At Wizard World's Wait, Comic Con. Wait, do we have a John Durham boss? Yeah, do you know which one? It's got to be Durham Oh, I know which one. I'm looking at it right now. It's got to be Magic Card Durham boss. Nope. Nah, it's too obvious. Barwin? Zach Ertz. He's everywhere. He's a nerd. Michael Kendricks. 
What? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> He's there Saturday uh, at 2.30 p.m. Oh, my God. And what's he doing? He's got to be get. He's obviously getting paid. It's just a sports theme panel. I mean, what what's the um capa- How many people are showing up to that at, at Wizard World Comic Con? How many people are going to the sports panel? Seventy five. I can't even imagine that. I've I mean, no idea. I mean I've they no got idea Dolph Ziggler prices, coming yes. the day afterwards from WWE. So maybe that's why Michael Kendrick's back in town for those workouts. He skipped those um voluntary ones. He showed up this week because he's going to Comic Con. Paid appearances. Yeah. You guys see there's a Cheesecake Factory open up this month across Apparently from Good Dog. a revolutionary across Cheesecake from, Factory. Across uh, from Jamie's That's... favorite bar in town, Good Dog. Oh, yeah, this is really... That's, you know what's surprising that Cheesecake Factory is not in it's Sunday shocking. City. It's shocking. That it's not in the city? Yeah. It's shocking. It's actually. open it's everywhere else. It's in every major right city. Right across the street from Applebee's, which has got to be the worst block of center city right now, oh. aside from... It is three stories. Did you see the model of this Cheesecake Factory? Has anyone actually been to the Center City Applebee's, like, inside? No, I'm terrified of that right. place. <laughs> I, no. I lived in Florida for three years, so I'll never go into another Applebee's in my entire life. Like, I've, been, I've had enough boneless buffalo wings for a lifetime. <laughs> but it, it just always amazes me that I walk past a three-story Applebee's in the heart of downtown Philadelphia. And it, and I don't pe- know who, and who they're actually, drawing from. And people actually go there. Are there people in there? They, they must. I mean, it's been open forever. I mean, I usually walk past it while I'm going to Gold Club late at night, but it's usually yeah. closed and empty at that point. <laughs> but I can't believe Gold Club is going to be situated between an Applebee's and a Cheesecake Factory right now. That's it's awesome. near our Gold Club? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's bordering it. <laughs> yeah. Can we do a live feed from there or no? We can Possible. work out something at Gold Club for sure. I love Cheesecake Factories. Do you? Yeah, but the only problem is the menu gives me severe anxiety. Why? Just it's, too it's overwhelming. A novel. Yeah, there's like 50 pages. You I want like everything, one, dude. I remember one time when I was like trying to get into swim shape or beat shape. Their salads were like 900 calories. There's nothing. Did no, you, it's not uh, healthy. Did you read like the percentage of the back of the cheesecake? No, it's like a thousand percent of your. Daily. I don't actually <laughs> eat cheesecake. <laughs> cheesecake factory. So you will die. It's, del- it's delicious. <laughs> the raspberry cheesecake is. Off the charts. Oh, actually, I've had a bite of the Oreo. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. But the food is so filling that you never get the dessert. Good for Center City finally getting with the times. So what's everybody's favorite cheese um, cheese steak place in town? I like Abner's in University City. I don't hear that message. I'm asking that because Philly.com gave a, um, a guide to for Wizard World people, people traveling oh, here for Comic Con. Cheesesteak mm-hmm. Like where they should of get cheesesteaks. They, they, they broke it down into little neighborhoods. Right here. Um, Jim, of, Jim's. Of the bigs, I like Jim's. Jim's made it. Uh, actually, yeah. uh, Jim's I mean, South Street. Yep, Jim's yeah. made it. The, I mean, the best the, the best one in town is John's Roast Pork. Yeah, John's is I agree. I think John's Roast Pork is amazing. So good. But of the big ones, Jim's is... And Jim's John's is. did not make their list. That's uh, Steve's, that's Steve's you, Prince of Steaks. Uh, Steve's is solid. Well, they Center broke City. it down. Reading Terminal, it's they gave John it to... John doesn't um, advertise, I guarantee you. Reading Terminal was... Probably. Carmen's. At night, uh... And by George Spataro's. Old City, Campos, and Sonny's. Campos, Campos is all Campos right. Su- no, they're too short. Too much bread. Across Broad Street, they gave it to Steve's Prince of States Steve's on 16th. Is Steve's is solid. South Street area, Jim's. Yep. There's a Steve's Ishka down Bibbles. here. Yeah, there's, there's one Steve's. in Center City. I've actually heard good things about Ishka Bibbles, and I've never, never I've had, actually... I had a buffalo chicken cheesesteak there once. It was solid. Ishka Bibbles is solid, but I like Jim's. There's something about That's the Marlon, and the Jim's. Marlon Marlon tweeted, I've always been a Jim's fan. Yeah, Jim's has always been my favorite. Marwin tweeted that Ishka Bibbles was his favorite as an out of Oh, South Philly, they said Pat's, Geno's, which... Like, no. I mean, it's yeah. good drunk. I'm with you, yeah. That's a, yeah I'll eat it. Yeah, four too. in the morning. Jim's and, Jim's and Pat's is like the Wawa yeah. of cheesesteaks. Like, See, I like, think Jim's is far better than Geno's. Did I say Jim's? I meant Pat's and oh, Geno's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Pat's and Geno's is like, eh, it's available, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Worth the trip, Tony Luke's. No mention of John's. No. Tony Luke's is solid. Yeah, yeah. but John's is the best. Like, John's. I'll say this about John's. This is not a paid endorsement, but... 
Their breakfast sandwiches oh are the... Oh, my God. Like, really? Yeah. Like it's an egg sandwich? strong suit. Oh. Dude, it's awesome. ridiculous. Best like which breakfast kind? sandwich ever. Like they, it's you like you get it on scrapple. like a steak roll. Yeah. And you get like a... It's a hoagie roll. I got a pork roll, egg, and cheese. Oh. And it's like three eggs, like three things of pork roll, <laughs> cheese melted all over. It's like a, it's like a pound of... All right. It's the best thing they do. Oh, it's awesome. All it's right. awesome. Best breakfast sandwich in food. Oh, Absolutely. It will change your life if you yeah. get a breakfast sandwich. You'll, you'll, you'll never do I have eat. to get meat. Can I? Like, if I don't eat meat, I mean, can I eat like I you, don't to, you don't have to do anything. This is America. Yeah. No, I mean, will it taste good? You think just egg and cheese, or I don't know. I Probably. like meat. I, mean, I don't think like... anything tastes good without meat. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, any of you guys watch Yuki Washington in the morning? No. I got a buddy who's a. I'm up you, are you mean you mean like outside his window? <laughs> <laughs> I used to intern for him, so I like. I, I like How him. is he? Very nice guy. Yeah. Very genuine. Yeah. He he made the um, Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame yeah, good last him. week. All right. So yeah, shout out to fucking Yuki. Yuki. And uh, Pat Shiraki presented the award. She's been in town forever. She's, a long time. She has. Yeah. You know who? Uh, Pat Shiraki and TV Nora Mushanik. Cecily Tynan. Yeah. I looked up her age. Yeah. She's 46. She's 46? Yeah. Dude, Cecily Tynan. Dude, carried me through high school. Oh, she yeah? Is still yeah. bringing it. I loved her. 46. I used to wake up in the Poconos watching her at 5.30 <laughs> in the morning doing traffic. She is killer. She she carried me through the teenage angst years. <laughs> it was great. I'm having a hard time taking it seriously with your son's Beats headphones on. Dude, I, I can't hear anything. <laughs> I'm sorry you got the $3 headphones that you got from Ikea. Oh, dude, they're like $15.99. What? They're like $15.99. They're terrible. Ikea doesn't sell headphones. You dude. said what while wearing those? You can't even hear those. I actually can hear you guys. Well, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I couldn't hear a word you said. Well, then again, you don't say too much. Yeah. <laughs> Let me call Uber. Angelini's ready to go yeah. home. I, I got pulled over in an Uber last time I was here. No you way. Did? Yeah. I was pulled over. Greg, retell the story of when we, we sent him home in an Uber cab. I was, on, you got some. I was taking a ride home in an Uber cab, and the car got pulled over because the guy. I didn't notice it because I was just on my way home. I didn't care. The guy didn't put on his taillights, so he got pulled over. So, and also, if you like '80s music, coming up in June, twenty, the weekend of twenty seventh and twenty eighth. Robert Drake, who's been a kind of a staple in town, he's going to do the hits of the 80s. So he's going to play every number one hit from 1980 to 1989 all weekend on XPN. What are the 80s? What are the 80s? Yeah. What do you I, I, I don't know. I've never been there. How old are you? Yeah, exactly. What, how old are you, like 23? 22. 22. Oh. Jesus Christ. Yeah. A little uh, Cindy Lauper, Aha, uh -huh, Culture Club. Thompson Twins, Human League. Yeah, so that'll be a good time. Robert Drake good, does good stuff. He, he DJs around town. He's a good guy. So uh, it'll be fun to listen to. That's uh, the weekend of the 27th to the 28th of June. Awesome number one hits of the 80s weekend. XPN, 88.5 FM. So we got a um, festival coming up that uh, I know bartender Bill's big about. He goes every year. He tells me about it. It's a, it's a kinetic sculpture race. Kensington Kinetic Sculpture Derby. Derby. It's, I think it's a... Uh, so tell us about it. Six, six years, I think. Six, seven years, something like that. It's basically all... Um, it's it's more of a parade than a race of um, people-powered, kinetic, kinetic power, um, vehicles, mostly bikes that are like welded together or... Um, Couple, like a couple friends of mine uh, build these incredible, huge contraptions, and they do a whole um, a whole series. I think it's maybe mile and a half, two mile circuit that goes through throughout Kensington. It goes by Johnny Brenda's. It's um, at least a twelve. I know it's at least a twelve block parade. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty long, and and it's all it's all people powered. And it's so in Kensington. It it's Ken Kensington, Fishtown, North of Liberty's North, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, it's it's all up in that area. Um, Gerard and Gerard and I guess uh, Frankfurt are two of the two of the blocks, and then there's a giant like um, I'd say a couple hundred vendors out there. There's a bunch. All the food trucks show up. It's like an all day party. I think it's um, Saturday, May 16th, I believe. 
Yeah, I think that's the date on it. So, uh, not not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And it's a lot of fun. It's it's and it's great because it's um, it's a lot of space. You can walk around. You don't have to be in the middle of like you know where everybody's watching the race. You can go on the whole route. There's all these different you know little side streets with people out there. Philly Bruins always out there. Yards is always out there. It's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's, and if it's nice weather, it's a great day. And when is it? Saturday, May 16th, I believe. I was I just was in that area this weekend. I went. Greg, you're gonna love this. I went to a con a 104.5 concert this weekend. Or was that Piazza? No, it was at the uh, Festival Pier. Oh yeah. Airborne Could you to- see it? Airborne Toxic. Oh yeah. And banks. Sure. Yeah, you would love that. But we started in okay. in Kensington. Did, did you did you Frankfurt go there Hall. with your kids or no? Yes. Oh yeah. We started at Frankfurt Hall and just bounced around a little bit. What'd Joe Stakes. What did you think of Frankfurt Hall? I, I like Frankfurt Hall. You I do. do. We you know, it, it was the post Broad Street Run crowd, so it wasn't a crazy crowd. Okay. It wasn't an obnoxious crowd. It wasn't a bad tipping crowd. It was like people that were actually enjoying their day and Wait, came from day, a lot of Broad Street runners, drinkers, daytime right. drinkers, out to have a great time. Adults. Yeah, <laughs> and they had um, the. Um, I, I'm a big fan of that v- new Vic, the Victory Summer Love. Summer Love. Summer Love, Summer Love. Yeah. Summer is one of my favorite beers, and that oh, was wow. like wow, it's a big was, upgrade for you. Yeah, that was the introduction. That was the introductory a summer weekend. shandy guy usually. Yeah, yeah whatever. Does, the wife, the, does sum- the wife know? Oh yeah, she loves it too. <laughs> but no, you know what? She had she had a um, the they had a Hefeweizen with gin and grapefruit. Oh, they had like a, their own their own muddled shandy. Sounds great. Yeah, it was actually delicious. So we had a few of those. But you've been oh, to Frankfurt Hall. You like Frankfurt? I've Hall? I've been there many times. I have uh, actually a couple friends actually that worked there too. And it's you know like Friday Saturdays. I'm gonna say it's pretty intolerable um, with the crowds. It's you know, I, I, I've exp- but, um, we've experienced that but, like, before. That sounds like a nice crowd. I'm like, but the Broad Street, you know, like a Wednesday, Thursday night, it was, it's, yeah. a, it's a cool place if we go to a group of people. Definitely. Right. I, I think it's a day bar. It's really a day bar. Yeah. I, I couldn't see going there at night. Ping pong tables were good. My sons and I played ping pong. But it was a nice walk from there to Festival Pier, and then they opened that Wissanoming. You remember the old Joe's, or they called Chink Steaks? Yeah, yeah the sure. Day. They opened there on the corner, and that's a, that's a good spot. So. Yeah. yeah it was How good was that? You ate that there? You ate I there? did. We ate it. We went to the concert. We hung out to the concert, and then we ate at Joe's Steaks afterwards. Nice. Tastes yeah, like Chinks. Nice it's sandwich. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they actually have beers a, and cheese steaks. They actually have a vegetarian cheese, cheese steak there too. And Festival Pier, I've never been to. It was very nice. You've though. never been there? No, I've never oh, yeah, been there. It's all right. Yeah. On a go sunny to, uh, day, it's a little rough. It was a little sunny on Sunday. Yeah. Going to see, uh, Wait till August comes around. Going to see uh, Primus and Dinosaur Jr. there. Festival wow. Pier? Guess how much the tickets were for Festival Pier. All right. Primus. 20, I would Primus say, and Dinosaur Jr. I would say $25, Pier. $58. <laughs> okay, so you're t- totally on different ends. Right in the middle, forty-five dollars. Forty-five. Oh, All right. Yeah, let's split the bill. I'm thinking about here? going, dude. I'm thinking about going to see. And I guarantee there's no coat check there. Jamie. Yeah. What's up, dude? How is the BLT? We're just wondering since you had to leave us for. Hey, it's still cooking. It's still oh, it's still uh, cooking. Are you, <laughs> wait, are you periscoping? I, I've actually seen Jamie periscope cooking of baking at like eleven in the afternoon, <laughs> eleven in the morning. <laughs> What? Uh, most of the bacon is cooked on our final two pieces. All right, so you haven't tasted it yet. No, it's delicious. We're missing you, dude. We're is about to a, do another shot right now without you. Is it a thick cut bacon? How's the L on the T looking? It is thick and sizzling. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Pretty All excited. Right. I hope it was worth it leaving this. Yeah, you leaving us. You're leaving us for the cooking? yeah. Periscope the bacon yeah. cooking. I just got a beer spilled all over my pants. Quick. Yeah, Fireball Johnny's just spilled a beer all over all over Dave. How do I get blamed for that? that was, it's a bare edge I'll of the never table. come back now. Uh, no, that's the last yeah, time he, he joins us. This will be really his last visit I'm to taking, Johnville. I'm no, taking I. two more weeks off. <laughs> Great. I'm a, I'm a full fledged resident of Johnville. now. We like it. But if but if you need somebody to be clapped, let me let me hop on that periscope. All right, Everybody. enjoy your BLT, man. I'll cook, I'll cook some bacon for you. Do it later. Later. Right, you could so be saying the same thing about. Uh, somebody I, I think we're having a mystery caller you calling in. We got someone we know. It's a mystery caller, a very important Philadelphian. Hello, welcome to the um, Johnville podcast. Is it Michael Nutter? Don't say much. It's not Jim Kenny, is it? Three one three is usually like a newspaper. Are you Jim Kenny? Hold on, are you Jim Kenny who called in like two weeks ago? No. No. All right. Is I'm your, gonna let these your guys... name begin with a K. Your last name. Uh, yeah. Yeah. His, his last name or his first name? Well, you can't ask first. Hold on. Let our let our other host here All right. ask. All right. 
You can ask any question you want. It's a famous Philadelphian, right? I mean, like, he's like nationally famous. Are you a politician? A is he alive or dead? Are you alive or dead? I feel like I'm dead tonight. Oh, is this <laughs> this is uh, Keith? Who? Oh, Mike Angelini's on. Angelini said Keith Pompey calling in. What's up, buddy? How are you? <laughs> what's up, Hello, what's up Keith going? Pompey? How you doing? <laughs> Where are you at? The NBA Finals or what? Where are you at? I'm actually sitting in the, on my couch watching the. Uh, Cavs beat up on the Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much are they winning by? They're up by 20, 96 to 70. Holy shit. Like, you know, it's it's amazing. Yeah. We're sitting at O'Neill's, and the basketball's not on one single TV here right now. It's, 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 on, it's hockey. Te- there's tennis on and, one of the TVs. And, and not just basketball, LeBron. Yeah. Keith, when will, yeah, we, get a, yeah, when will we get a Sixers playoff game on TV? Ooh. Um... Man, this must be a while, dude. I'll tell you, five or six years. <laughs> really? Wow. Keith, when are we going to get you to come down here and do some shots and beers with us and podcasts? We got David Murphy's hanging out with us tonight. Come on. What's up, Keith? Oh, for real? Yeah. I mean, you guys should. If I would have known, I would have been down there tonight. Oh, you only come down uh, when David Murphy's here. <laughs> you don't want to see no, us, though, no. right? Uh, he, you know. he sees us every five years at the, college, the high school reunion. Ooh. You all went to high school together? <laughs> yeah. Really? Me, him. Yes. Me, uh, Fireball Johnny, yes. Keith. Yeah, I, 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 really? I, I, I played football with Keith. The most no famous, way. Guys, the most well, famous I guy. I went to. I went to grade school with the oh, most you famous guy. Oh, you did go to grade school. Yeah, yeah, we yeah like John. L. And John, I met John in the first grade. John's the blackest white dude you know. <laughs> what, what grade did you guys? <laughs> what high school did you guys well, go to? We went to North. North right. Catholic. All right. Yeah. yeah. I don't trust Catholics. I, that's why I put it in Keith Pay. <laughs> great is that? It was cool. So, y'all having a good time, though? Yeah, we're man, we're having a good time. We're just saying to, uh, we're just talking about uh, Sam Hinkie and uh, Dave. Uh, Dave Murphy's a Nerlens hater. Uh, okay. What do you think about? I him? consider myself a Nerlens realist, but I mean, I think Nerlens is all right. I like him. He's going to be a defensive he's specialist. He's going to have some energy. He'll put up 10, 12 points a night. Right, yeah, I think he's like Theo Ratliff, six man, whatever. I mean, I think, I think you know, like again, Nerlens is, is raw. I mean, I, I will say that, um, but I think he has a, a, a upside. I mean, he's like a different type of big. You know, some people look at him and say, "Well, damn, he doesn't have any post up moves. He can't do this. He can't do that." But he's like really like energy driven. And the, and the funny thing is, you know, he looks he looks like a completely different person after they traded Michael Carter Williams. You know what I mean? Yeah. And. It, and a lot of people were saying it was like Mike wasn't giving him the ball at the right time, this and that. All I know is after Mike left, he just, you know, showed that he can be a a reliable big in the NBA. And, uh, Keith, right, they started winning games, and it was awesome. And Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Get, you, you finish that. So, Keith, this is Mike Angelina. You probably deal with him. He's a producer on WIP. Yeah, Keith, I think I've called you during uh, Ricky right. shows a few times. Uh that same, like on that, the trend you're talking about in New Orleans after Carter Williams left, I also noticed a spark in confidence. And he seemed to be willing to, you know, if it wasn't a short basket, he was okay with getting to the line. Did you see that? Like, he, he was more confident. Did you see that, too? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And, and, but, the, you know, that he was confident. He also, I mean, he realized that he knew he was going to get certain touches. I mean, you know, it, it's like Michael Carter Williams, you know, I hate to seem like I'm always hating on the guy, but, you know, he... he well, he, he sucks, he was, so you can hate on him while you're <laughs> he was, He's like Nick Foles. <laughs> I'm a Syracuse he, guy, and he's like, he's average. Oh, so, you know, I mean, that's exactly, you know, it seems like whenever Michael Carter Williams, like when he left Syracuse, you know, the point guard came and replaced him and everything was... Was better. Can't I mean for the for the cues. Dude, yeah, I don't. Just, I honestly like, don't understand how you can improve your shooting. That is the only skill in basketball that you can actually just improve just by working on it. I don't understand why Michael Carter Williams cannot improve his jump shots. Well, you know, think about it. You know, you're a six six point guard. You're typically bigger. You're, you're you're bigger than everyone else. So it's kind of like there's a matchup problem. He can all he always thrives on being able to get to the lane. Right. You know. And, I think that had a lot to do with it. And also, I didn't think his shoulder had something to do with it. But, again, it was more of a, you know, he was a scorer. That makes he more wasn't, sense to me with her. That makes more hmm? sense with those headphones. No, don't listen to them, Keith. Bill's talking about something going on here. Sorry. 
Okay. Sorry about that. It's it's falling apart, though. Yeah. Or, uh, Keith. <laughs> Lesser man love is. <laughs> we have a woman here. She's our hostess. Her dad was actually an American ball player in the um, minor league. No, she, he played for the Reds, and their last name is Fully Love. Oh, Fully Love. That's yeah. Right. Keith, what do you think about a girl that's last name is Fully Love? Fully Love. Fully Love. <laughs> Fully Love. Imagine with Fully Love. Yeah. It's a good last name, right? Um, you, you, well, if it's bully love, you would think her man must be big as shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, and she's giving up all the love. <laughs> like, nah. Keith, um, <laughs> Keith, what's the first concert you ever went to? We always ask that question about people who call in or hang out here. The first concert that I ever went to was a public enemy concert. Yeah, like, I like it. I then. like it. Yeah. Where at? That was the first one. Huh? Where? Where? Where, where was? Was the venue? Was, what, what year? It was in. It was '89, and it was in DC. It was right after I graduated nice. um, from high school in Washington, DC. I still follow Chuck D on Twitter. He's one of my best Twitter follows. He's got great information and great knowledge. Every day he tweets that out. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, they were a little different, but it was they they put on a great show. They would you know? still they would still be different and radical now, like twenty five years, twenty six years later. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, they but the thing is, I mean, it was a good show. I mean, you know, for back in the day, it was like, whoa, I was kind of blown away. But you know, it was cool. It was cool. And so, who are you like in the draft this year? Who are you hoping the Sixers end up taking? You know, it's weird. I mean, if if they go like a lot of people keep saying, and you know, best player available, and some think it's Carl Towns. But I think I think I think it would be a disappointment if they drafted a center for the for a year. So I'm thinking that Russ is probably the best one that they should get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for 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 their needy. Now Moody, you know, in a way I'm talking, you know, I could see this one out there and possibly you know it settling for Moody as well. But right now he's. He's, he's a younger Carter Williams. I mean, you know, he's 6'6", he's 200 pounds, so he's bigger than Carter Williams, but he struggles shooting the ball. That's not to say that he can't improve, but when you look at Russell right now, you see someone who, who's ready to step in and play. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I think it's time to start, you know, filling out a roster as opposed to saying, okay, this guy could be a good asset. Keith, um, you know, you... You, you talked about the best available decision. Is that when you consider that? How worried are you on uh, Joe Embiid's foot? I mean, I think you have to be very concerned. I mean, you know, the thing about Embiid, okay, he does this dunk between his legs, right? Right. And it, it becomes like a YouTube. Um, it goes viral on like YouTube, and then all of a sudden he has to go get his foot checked out by the doctor <laughs> in, in California. <laughs> right. You know, and but. You know, they make it seem like, you know, it was two separate things. Like it didn't call like the foot wasn't injury wasn't caused by that or the reoccurring injury. So it's like, you know, what do you believe? I mean, I believe that, you know, once you have a bad foot, unless you, you you're you're a slender guy, you know, and you're a seven foot, you know, it's going to keep reoccurring. So yeah, that's a fear. I mean, it has to be. All right. So you know? if that is a fear and a concern for you, why wouldn't you draft big again? You can well, never have too many bigs, right? You can never have too many bigs, but when you think about it, you think about Dario Sarge, right? Everybody talks about him. Mm-hmm. And everyone thinks that, okay, because we haven't seen him, everyone says, okay, this guy can slide to the three. He's a power forward. You know what I mean? He's not sliding to the three. I mean, and, and if so, he's going to, like, struggle playing that, keeping up. Is so he he's even- a power forward. Nerlens Noel is a power forward. Why would you understand? Him? Do you th- do you think he would struggle just from a speed wise, like a speed wise, or a strength, or what? Well, yeah, for a speed wise. I mean, the thing is, it's like if you play power forward, you know, a power forward and center like all your career, then someone says all of a sudden, I want you to be a three. You know, people don't realize the small forward, the shooting guard, and small forward position. These guys are the most athletic guys in the NBA. You know, you know, arguably some people could say because of their quickness and stuff like that, you know, these could be some of the most athletic guys in, in sports. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So 
how are you going to have a post player guarding him? Now, I know he's 6'10", and he can shoot, but, you know, he, he's going to be lost out there. You know, so, I mean, my thing is, when you build a team, I understand what we're saying about Joel Embiid, but, you know, if you're, if, if you're building a team, sometimes it comes out to let's build a team and not one after all the post players. I mean, the last I checked, the NBA was a guard. You know, I mean, think about most of these dominant teams right now. They're all, they're all like their lead players are either two, are like either a point guard, a two guard, or a three guard. Right. I watched you know last night. I watched a series completely turn around just from the fact Mike Conley returned, a point guard. It, it, exactly. I mean, you know, you, you think about it. I mean, like even like Blake Griffin, as much hype as he gets, everyone knows that's Chris Paul's team. Right. right. You know. Yeah, totally. So, you know, it, it's, it's it's just one of those things. Like I think that, you know, getting all these guys, all you want to do is, and, and again, like okay, we all talk about Joel Embiid's foot. You know, I get it. But if you go out there and you get another center, the next thing you know, you trade Joel Embiid or you get rid of Nerlens Noel. All that's doing is prolonging the rebuilding process. You know, I mean, you look, look look at the Milwaukee Bucks. We could talk trash about them. They went from the last place team to making the playoffs, and they're still a young team. So you know, the way you have, I mean, if the Sixers keep on doing this, it's, it's going to be seven, eight years before they even try to get close to where Milwaukee yeah. is. But do you think that's you the wrong thing? Like, do you think they should rush trying to be, you know, a six through eight seed, or do you think they should just do whatever it takes to get a, you know, one of the to become one of the best teams in the East? I guess that's where well, most see, fans are on different sides. Well, that's where most fans are on different sides. But see, here's the thing: how hard is it to be the eighth seed in the East? It's easy. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, let, let, let's be real. I mean, you got teams who made the playoffs with losing records, right? And and then you know, it, it, it's Okay, they had two of their players, they had two, uh, which Barney Parker was hurt, so he didn't play. So they're going to get him back next year. They also have another guy from France who was a rookie who didn't play. So it's like, you know, they have Carter Williams again, and I know I'm I'm not a huge Carter Williams fan, mm-hmm. but then again, if you surround him around great people and tell him all you have to do is run the offense, he's a very... Um, he's a, a pretty good. He becomes a pretty good point guard because he doesn't have to shoot the ball. So you get them, and then you let these guys throw together. Then you have someone like the Greek Freak. You don't have yeah. to keep trying to get. You don't have to have to um, try to keep getting a lot of picks. You know, you have to get a core, and then you have to build. And think about this, y'all. When is the last time that you guys saw a guy who was first overall in the lottery? Lead the team that he he was drafted to 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 a to a championship. LeBron. Well, LeBron had to change cities. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. This is yeah. all about free agency now. You know, so people say that. So then you can say, okay, LeBron. We say LeBron went to the championship. You can say the same thing about Kevin Durant. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Dwight went to a championship, but real, the Magic team realistic, ne- realistically never had a chance of winning anything just because the way they were built. But basically what you're saying, Keith, though, Hinky is the opposite. He he seems to not value point guard at all. He seems to feel like that's something he could just plug in at the end. And that's like well, the last no, piece of his know, puzzle. You know what I think, man? I think, see, here's the thing that we got to realize with the Sixers. It's like when you, when you got a team like, you know, the Sixers where they're, you know, they're basically rebuilding. You know, they got these guys out here. They're showcasing them. They're, they're basically assets. So whereas a Michael Carter-Williams, he's playing on a bad team. They're getting blown out. He gets reinserted in the fourth quarter. They spread the floor. He scores eight points. It's like three assists. Yeah. Then he has a triple-double, right? right? So the next thing you know, what Inky does is he's saying, Okay, a lot of people didn't watch the games, but they're looking at these stats. Wow, he's rookie of the year. So he becomes a great point guard, a great asset. So basically what they're doing is they're they're building people up so they can trade them. So I think that he does want to get a great point guard, and I think he realizes and the Sixers realize that you can't win the championship with Carter with it. You know, he, he doesn't, for the offense that they run, they need a point guard stick the open three. That's not part of winning. I, remember, I, I sat down with somebody and ranked the point guards in the league, and we struggled to have Carter Williams in the top 20 
three. Like, we, we gave him, you know, maybe he, some some people may say top 20 or top 23. We didn't even think he was a top 20. Like, he's really behind the curve as far as well, what he, comes to he point can't, guards. He can't shoot. He can't defend. He's not a great penetrator. So, yeah, I think what, you, so what is he? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the number. I think you know what. I I I don't know if there are twenty point guards in the league better than him. I think that in the Sixers situation, he just didn't look good. I think the fact that, like, let's face it, Jason Kidd couldn't shoot. Right. Yeah, but yeah, Jason like, Kidd could he, penetrate, he, and 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 he had a handle. Like I, I don't think Michael exactly. Carter Williams has a hand. Defense too. Yeah, and he played defense. I think uh, literally the only skill Michael Carter Williams brings to the table is he's long, and he can finish at the rim. Yeah, he gets to the basket. Yeah, yeah but he's not a he's not a slasher. He's not a, he's not a creator. Like he's not in terms of point guards. He's not like he's not like like Kyle Lowry to me is like your ideal. NBA point guard. I love Kyle Lowry. Catholic League North. Yeah. Cardinal Docker. Like, that's, like, yeah. the type of guy you need. And, like, Michael Carter-Williams just isn't that guy. Well, uh, he may not be, but I, I, I think in the situation that he, where he's going to, he doesn't have to be. Like, all, well, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. said, all he has to do is get to the rim and then and then spread the ball around, you know. And then he's going to be with a, a point guard, you know, like Jason Kidd. Who's going to tell him like, look, this is all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. Right, but Michael so Carter think, Williams is your fifth guy. He's like your fifth option on a team. Like he's your fifth most important player on a playoff team. Exactly, exactly. You're exactly right. All right, so listen. More importantly, Keith, where do you where do you get a cheesesteak from in town? What's your favorite spot? Man, I go to this place. It's, it's called Pagano. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, like, yeah. Oh. I've been to that's North Philly right <laughs> that's, there. That's right. Yeah, Give a shout out. Where that's look? Where's that located? That's on. Wait, that's on Ogons, isn't it? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Murph. Yep, Murph knows. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you going to yeah. Cardinal Docker neighborhood for a cheesesteak? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You know, I have a lot of cousins. You can't go to around. Joe's. You can't go to Joe's Steaks up in Tarsdale on Tarsdale Ave. Uh, yes. back in the day, passed me the best place. You don't, come, you, don't come, you don't come back to St. Joachim's Cross's Deli? Remember Cross's Deli across the river St. Joachim's? Remember Brian Cross? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't come yeah, back there for yeah. cheesesteaks? Hey, I will if it's still open. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming here in like, you, can you come here in two weeks and uh, hang out with us live? You come hang out and have some beers with us, Keith. I will. I mean, seriously, if you, if you let me know. Like in advance, I'll, I'll definitely be there. All right, All right. we do weeks. a lottery podcast. He's a busy man. Yeah, yeah we should do a lottery, lottery podcast for the before that. Definitely. All right. All right. Thanks for calling in, Keith. You're great, man. Thank hey, you. Thanks for having me, man. Take it easy, brother. All right, man. Peace. See you. Thank you. All right, so I think we're gonna wind it up unless we hang out for a bit and some crazy. Females come in here in a little while. We'll see what well, happens. We are going to do that. Know, let's, yeah, uh, we'll hang we out. We'll be on air. Yeah. So uh, take a break if we need to redo yeah. it again. So I'd like to thank O'Neill's for having us again. Happy hour broadcast. It's the first time we've ever um, hit the airways or recording while the sun was out. Right. It's been also, different. Uh, downstairs, We're downstairs, downstairs with the general yeah. population. It's been okay. No one's bothered us yet. It's nice. So. uh well, I don't uh, know. Thanks extreme, again, O'Neal. You know, Cheers, a, guys. Great, 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 yeah. great seats right here next to the Thanks bathroom. Thanks to David Murphy. I, he's a uh, solid member now, I think, of Johnville. I'm in. Fit in just like he's been here from the beginning. So nice to, nice to have you, David. How long has Johnville been here? This is our ninth episode. Wow. So, like, uh, a couple months. Yeah, sure. I feel like I'm in. You know I love you, baby. So Thanks again for checking us out. Yo, yo.